Hey guys, so today we are with Dennis Brennan, who is the owner of Brennan's Model Railroad. Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what it is you sell and what you're doing today, actually? Certainly. Well, right now I'm doing scenery on a layout that um, that I worked with um, Andrew. Me. <laughs> yeah, with Andrew. So Andrew and I have been working together, well on this project anyway for about five years maybe okay and um but to get back to where i came from in 1997 um i'd been writing articles for classic toy trains and i discovered a product for ballast and i was going to write about this and my wife said to me don't write about it why don't you sell it Smart woman. <laughs> yeah. And so Brennan's Model Railroading was born, and it's gone from ballast to now, uh, this is like my 25th, 25th year in business. Okay. Um, and so now I'm selling kits. So obviously this is your ballast, mm -hmm. or at least some of it. This is some of it. So can you tell me the color combo here and what you got going on as far as that? Yes. Um, this is what I call my natural gray stone. And it's a, a mixture of several different colors of gray, light, medium, dark, and some little darker pieces of almost black. Um, and it just looks real. Okay. It's the kind of ballast that I remember when I was growing up. And then I also have yard ballast. My yard ballast is right over here. This is the yard ballast, um, and it is a dark blend. It's actually not black. It looks black, but it's actually a, a, a blend of really dark gray colors. Okay. And um, uh, and your ballast is what? Actual stone, right? Yes, it's crushed granite. It's actually crushed granite. And if you look over here, this is... This is all scenery product that I sell. This is superior sand that I have in between the um, the tracks. And if you look through the yard, the yard isn't going to be all yard ballots. You, you can see this very... So you got the nice mottled look yes. there. So you got the coal cinders mixed in with the ballast mm -hmm. and a little bit of green poking out here or there, just like you would yes. see in real life. Yes. And that's well. the whole thing. Nothing is ever one solid color in real life. Yeah. And and the reason I like superior sand, I don't do anything to this sand. This sand comes directly from Lake Superior. Um and that's iron ore country. And okay. It has so that's this, why it's got the rusty color. Yes, it's got this rusty color kind of color blend and people love it. Um Trainworks, TW Trainworks uses my stuff all the time. They, they, the majority of the layouts that they use, use my ballast. Okay, and why should people use your ballast as opposed to, say, kitty litter or oil dry or something <laughs> like that? I mean, they're very common. It's very popular. So tell me what the difference is. Well, there's really no comparison, okay? Kitty litter, <laughs> kitty litter is made to clump. I mean... Cats do their stuff in it, and it clumps up. And I tried kitty litter myself just to see what the difference would be. First of all, it's out of scale. Okay. Most of it. The, and kitty litter, there isn't like one brand of kitty litter. I mean, there's stuff all over the place. I had a hard time trying to find what kind of kitty litter could actually work. So I got different kinds. They have stuff with scent so it basically just kind of turns into goo after yeah, a while, right? Yeah, it does. And it and it. it so what about oil dry? Because I mean, it's it's a similar dry, product, but it's somewhat yeah. different. Now, kitty litter and oil dry again. They're uh, they're actually made. A lot of them are made from diametaceous earth. Okay. And it's dirt basically, um, and it. And like all dirt, as soon as you get it wet, it turns into mud. Yeah, it's kind of muddy. It's kind okay. of muck, mucky, and so. Yeah, you can save some money buying those products, but when you spend the kind of money that you're going to spend on track and <laughs> and cars, yeah. cars or, you know, engines, one engine 
like one of the legacy engines that cost a thousand dollars, you'll never spend that much money on ballast. I don't care how big your layout is. You're not going to spend a grand on ballast. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. So uh, you you sell other things besides ballast, though, right? Yes, I sell ballast. I sell ground cover materials. Okay. Um, I have a realistic chain link fence kit that's designed just like a chain link fence. Oh, that's cool. And um, uh, it even comes with a jig because you have to solder the little metal frame together, and then it oh, has nice. the appropriate size. Um, uh, oh, so you, the mesh. rivet counter should go get your chain link fence. Yes. Okay. There is not any other chain link fence on the market that is even close to mine. And then you do structures as well, right? Yes. Um, do you have any examples here? Uh, well, let me see. Um, I don't actually have... <laughs> I have a lot of kit bash things that I've done. Okay. In every model that you see up here... Oh, you've got one of yours in the other room, yeah, though, in right? Yeah, okay. room. I'll, I'll cut in a picture for you guys. Okay. And then the last thing... Uh, you wrote a book. Well, that's my structure. Oh, well, yes, house, that's right. But I'm not making it anymore. <laughs> oh, well, okay. It's a plaster roundhouse kit. Nobody has ever done one, and I know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never do it again. So t tell me about your book. Okay. So I, I know you're very proud of it, and I've used it for reference a few times. So this is his book, and uh, the book, if you look on the cover here, you open this up, that is a project layout that I built for classic toy trains called the Sandy Harbor Terminal Railroad. And the idea was to show what you could do in a small space to make it seem bigger than it is. And what I did is, um, this this layout isn't really that big. It's got two lobes. The back of it is like, um, it's kind of L-shaped. Uh -huh. And one, one side is like 12 feet and the other side is like 14 feet. And it's like a bent kidney. Okay, shape. so this book, is it for beginners or is it for this intermediate? This book is for Just everybody. about everybody, okay. yes. Um, the difference between most books and what what I've written, um, a lot of books give you like how to do this, how to do that. Well, I'm an artist, so I give you the art behind the decisions that I make here so that you can, this isn't about building this layout. It's using this layout to explain how to approach building a model railroad. Yeah, and, and you were talking about forced perspective, and I mean, you can actually see behind you. Yes. So in, in real life here is he's got O-gauge buildings in front, and then the ones in the back, okay. those are actually HO, HO scale. scale. But from here, in the video even, you can tell it just blends in together. So we got some Disney magic here in the Orlando area. <laughs> so it's it's quite cool. So that, I mean, that's just one of the things he explains in this book. Yes, I but he goes into great detail. And I mean, look at the detail he puts into this stuff. It's absolutely crazy. And I've actually uh, used real rock here. I mean, <laughs> uh, real rock. Um, I like to use natural products whenever I can. Um, why why make plaster molds if you can use real rock? But the thing is, you have to find the rock. Uh, gotcha. That's that's. So, so where can people find you? Find your book. Find your ballast. All that fun stuff. Okay. Well, um, my name is Dennis Brennan. Now, if you can look and see that right there. So it's what DennisBrennan.com. Well, no, it's Brennan's Model RR dot com. I'll put it in the link below, and I'll probably put a text on the screen for you guys, too. So that said, thank you. appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you on a video pretty soon. All right. Thank you.